All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the uh, clay brush here in sculpt mode somewhat useful. If you've used this brush before, you'll know that it normally does this number, and it's, yeah, it's okay. It's nothing real special, right? It doesn't feel like it's doing much at all, usually. Uh, some of you might really like it, but normally I have no use for it. So what we're going to do is actually give it some purpose in life. And um, go to your favorite photo editor. Create a 2048 uh, by 2048 image. You could go higher if you wanted. That's on you. Um, make it an RGB 16-bit. You could do probably a grayscale 16-bit as well. Click Create. Do a bucket fill. We're going to paint it all black. We're going to create an alpha here. So now we got to make a layer. Oop. Actually, I'm going to press Control A, Control C, Control V. That's going to paste in another uh, copy of that layer. Press Control I, and I can go ahead and do a uh, invert. So now I can grab the transform tool, hold Control while doing this, and scale it down about halfway. Um, keep in mind in Blender, there's a circle drawn around your alphas, and the fall off is applied from that circle. So basically, you need this to be a little bit more inside of that circle area, and it's going to have to blur in this area. So you want to make it about um, about half as big, roughly. Should work pretty pretty okay. Once you do that, uh, make sure the marquee selection is gone. So press Control D. That'll get rid of it. Now we're gonna make sure your layer is selected, filter blur, Gaussian blur, and all we're making is a blurry box, basically. Filters blur, Gaussian blur. There you go. Um, you can set it to 100 or 75 pixels. Those tend to work best, but what um, I would personally do is create a completely sharp square and then do like a 25, uh, maybe like a 25 pixel and then like a 50 pixel and then a 75 and a 100 and save all of those out. So every time you adjust it, save it and then make another one and save it. All right. So click apply, control alt shift and S and affinity photo here. You save a PNG file. Save it somewhere where you'll remember it. Now, back in Blender, this brush, we're going to load an alpha onto it. So we're going to go to Texture up here, and we're going to click New. All right? Normally, you won't have this. This is an add-on. It's called uh, Sculpt Alphas Manager. It lets you just click and add your alphas as needed. But um, we're going to click New, and now we're going to do Area Plane. Make sure you check Rake. Okay? Down here is the Image tab. And click open and find the alphas that you created in whatever folder you saved them in. And so you can select square, uh, 100, 75, 50, 25, whatever you created. And voila, we now have this loaded. Okay, this is kind of important here. We want to make sure that it's actually loaded. Uh, sometimes when you press Control Z and go back, it will unload it for whatever reason. I don't know if they're going to fix that or not. I don't know if that's a bug, but. Um, under stroke, change spacing to whatever you need. Sometimes you might need it down at 1%. When you're sculpting on bigger objects, you might not need it that low. So you can change it up to like 5s or 10s or 15s or whatever. Um, under fall off, check this out. When you press F, if you look at this alpha very carefully while holding down F or hitting F, um, these corners right now are a little bit softer. And you can see there's kind of this little spherical shape. Um, to the to the square alpha here. You don't want that. So you have to change this to um, from fall off smooth to constant. Right? And so now that little kind of spherical shape should be mostly gone. It sometimes it likes to linger around a little bit, but it's mostly gone now. Okay. Alright. Now that we got all that out of the way, this is what we've just done. We have turned the clay brush into clay strips. What? It, like, yeah, clay strips. That's what we've done. It's basically the same thing, right? So, but it's a little bit nicer, in my opinion. It actually works a lot better, especially for, I'm going to turn the strength all the way up. Uh, with high strength, you get nice extrusions out. If you hit control, you can get nice. Uh, Cuts into the, your mesh like so. 
and it's perfect for uh, hard surface modeling in my opinion as you can just you see how like I'm starting in here there's a little delay to the brush so you can actually use that to your advantage basically if I draw on a little circle here nothing happens you have to actually get it to step first right before it starts drawing so even if I did that somewhere right here you can see I can completely miss the mesh there and actually start cutting out from there which is really awesome but this thing still has some curious oddities about it that uh, you know it still acts like a clay brush it still re you know acts kind of like a, a in other programs it's called a wax brush but it still acts like that but it acts like clay strips at the same time so you can actually do like these little fills you can kind of fill in little areas relatively easily without too much trouble and if you had a couple areas that were raised up right you can also kind of cut down on them too you might get a little bit of a cut going in here but for the most part just cut it all the way out I don't know if you can see that too well but right so you can go back and adjust that to make it even better if you wanted to and so this is going to give you a great chance to make uh, different kinds of textures and whatnot so you can do like bricks concrete you can just knock out corners because if you hold control down right it acts like it's a kind of like a scraper a little bit and so you can make some damaged corners and stuff real easily with this combine this with a uh, crease tool and you're you're in business right if you use it softly, remember I'm using a drawing tablet right now, so I have pressure uh, sensitivity for the strength. Uh, but if you turn it on for radius as well, uh, you, you can have a lot of fun with this. But strength, if you turn your strength down, it tends to try to scrape or blur or blend more. You can see as you use it lighter and lighter, kind of creates these this kind of like smoothing effect almost or a scraping effect and it actually works a little bit better than the uh, scraper or flatten tool in my opinion because it tends to you're not having that curvature affecting it right so you can get some pretty um, crisp flat areas that don't have much bend into them so let me give you an idea here if I go uh, full strength and I just draw back and forth here, you'll see that this area remains mostly kind of the same shape it was originally. It's got a slight curve to it, but it's very flat. So if I was trying to scrape off, say, an edge of something like this, let's make a groove next to it. There you go. Let's say I was trying to like bevel this edge. It's going to tend to stay a little bit more flat with that normal than uh, than if you were using a flatten tool or the regular scrape tool. Those have a tendency, like like let's do uh, low pressure scrape smooth of the surface, right? It stays flat. So the trick here is, even if I push hard and I do it pretty heavily, it's still flat. Scrape tool, on the other hand. If you work it back and forth, a lot of times it won't. Oh, I got it modified right now. Sorry. You use a regular one. A lot of times it'll start digging a hole into this. It's not doing it right now. Maybe it'll do it right there. You can. There you go. You see, it's creating that curve inwards. So at certain angles, it'll start doing that. This brush doesn't seem to do that. It actually seems to behave extremely well in all situations. So it's none of that curvy nonsense. It does get a little wavy though. But it's not it's not nearly as bad as the scrape tool or the flatten tool by default. Um the trick about what just happened here was my my uh, scrape tool I've modified to act like the H polish brush a little bit from ZBrush. So in combo with this, it actually works pretty good. 
I'll make another video about this one later on because it you see it still curves it a little bit but it's not nearly as bad as the standard scraper I can come through and do that number but it still does push it down a little bit usually doing a little bit of a circle pattern helps but sometimes it don't all right so just if you're curious how you make this I'm gonna kind of I'll do a full video on it later but the main takeaway for this one is it's not using the texture right now it is under brush plane trim 0.2 hardness or normal radius 0.2 accumulate that's on um, I have it set to root I think root works best spacing 7% just strength for spacing that's pretty much it so you can try to make that if you want and combo these two together and I think you got a killer combo for a uh, hard surface anyways because now you can just get really flat result here for the most part take this one out yeah that's about as sharp as it's going to get so I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something in this and I'll check you out in another one. Till then, take care. I'll see you next time.